Welcome to 3 Minute Retro. Today we're going to talk about the BBC Micro. This is a Model B computer. There was also a Model A, which was produced by Acorn Computers. It was originally going to be called the Proton, and that was a upgrade to the original Acorn Atom. And the idea was to produce a dual processor system, which was going to be a lot more powerful than their Acorn Atom model at the time. But because of the intervention by the BBC Broadcasting Corporation, the Model B and the Model A BBC microcomputer system was born, which is what you see in front of you now. And the timeline for this is 1980. The BBC decided to start a computer literacy television series and required an increasingly inexpensive microcomputer. They originally wanted the Newbury New Brain because that machine fit their specs more closely at the time. But the New Brain was never going to be ready in time. So the BBC Broadcasting Corporation put the machine out for tender. Now this machine was a kind of revised version of their original idea for the Proton which is why you have the ability through the tube expansion to connect other processors. There were a few iterations of the BBC microcomputer, including the Model A, the Model B, and the Model B Plus, which came out in 1985. Originally, the Model B had 32K of RAM. The Model B Plus had 64K of RAM, and it also had internal circuitry already on board for Econet and the disk drive as standard, whereas the Model B, you had to incorporate that into the case but most of the time it was a simple plug-in exercise on the Model B although the Econet adapter if it wasn't produced when ordered with the Model B you had to have some soldering skills or be able to find somebody who could do it for you. Now the BBC microcomputer the A, B and B Plus was manufactured by Acorn Computers and it was mainly used for educational purposes. It became the number one go-to machine for every school and college in the UK. It ran from 1981 from its official launch and it included BBC Basic which is one of the best programming languages for most microcomputers out at the time. It had an amazing full stroke QWERTY keyboard, which is one of the best feeling keyboards on any microcomputer of the time. Now the Model A's are fairly rare because most people bought the Model B. Its text modes were 80 by 32 in two colours, 40 by 32 in two or four colours, 20 by 32 in 16 colours and 14 by 25 in teletext. The number of colours were 16 colours, 8 colours and 8 flashing. The sound was three channels and plus one noise channel and it was seven octaves. It was quite a chunky machine and it weighed in at 3,700 grams. It was 41 by 34 by 65 centimeters in diameter. The I.O. ports on this machine is what made this machine stand out. It had UHF TV out, BNC video out, RGB out, RS-232, cassette, analog in. It also had an Econet port, a tube interface, a 1 megahertz bus, a user port, a printer port, a disk drive connector. And it had so many peripherals being mainly used as an educational machine, including controller cards, floppy disk controllers, cassette recorders, numeric keypads, second processors. And the price of this machine was £399 in the UK in 1983, which put it at the same price as a Commodore 64 and arguably for roughly the same price as a Commodore 64 at the time, you had a machine that was eminently more capable and eminently more expandable. Although this machine did not make serious inroads into the gaming market and it stayed more of a serious machine or an educational machine. It was also used a lot in laboratories and used as a scientific tool as well. This has been 3 Minute Retro on the BBC microcomputer system. Hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.